Hello, this is Norman. <laughs> That's me, buddy. That's news. Are you Harry? Yeah, hi Norman. It's Harry Davis from MMA Latest News. Thanks for joining me this afternoon. No sweat, mate. I've got to get it wrapped up now because, you know, I've uh, got a couple of things that popped up for us uh, earlier on, you know, this afternoon. So, we're kind of great to get it sorted now, you know, in a way. Yeah, have you had a busy week then? Yeah, just like running around like a headless chick and getting stuff sorted, like getting, you know, my kit sorted and getting sponsors turned on and stuff's like wrong. So, I'm going yeah. back and forth and back. So, it's uh, no other way for it. It's just. I love it though. <laughs> uh, I saw they released the. Was it? The, I saw. I think they took the promo out for your fight the other day, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that. I watched that the other day. It looked quite good, actually. Um, yeah, they always do good videos and stuff like that there, and then you got that old Northern Irish accent on there. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what the fuck? Yeah, they have to put the subtitles <laughs> on, of course, as well. But um, <coughs> so have you got training um later today, or is that have you had that this morning? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I did a hard a couple of hard sessions yesterday, so I'm just taking it off right now. Um, I feel I'm almost there, so tonight we'll just do a little bit of, just some uh, grappling exchange, it's nothing really hard, I'm, I'm not really pushing too hard this week, I'll do probably one more sparring session maybe on Thursday, and then just with the wee gloves, and then from there it's just um, it's just staying nice and light and sharp, that's it, everything's kind of already, it's not like I've really been, um, you know, since my last fight with, with Gamrot, I took a wee bit of time off, like a month or something, a couple of injuries just had to heal up, but I was still always doing something, staying active, and you always think that you need to keep pushing hard, hard, hard every yeah. day, but no, I, I, I realised that, you know, over the last while, it's to, you know, you know your body better than anybody else, so yeah. it's, um, it's uh, you know it far better than anybody else, so whenever you get someone pushing and grinding you every day, it can, it can break the body, so I've been there too many times, and I'm, I'm getting up there in age, well, I'm coming 31 here in December, so I'm going to look after myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, overtraining, I mean, you see it's some... Part, yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, before I went to America, like we would have trained where you know our boys up here, and we trained like animals, you know. So I went when I went to America, the first experience I had to in America, we had like we did the first day, and I thought, is that is that was done? Like we, we never really did much, and they were like, wait, what do you mean? And we, we I was just telling them what way we did our stuff back home, and it's like, whoa, fuck, that's too much, too much, too much, mm-hmm. you know. So I, I took that on board and just kind of take everything at my stroll because I know once the fight comes, I'm. I'm ready to fight. The mental toughness and everything's there, like because most of the game is all mental toughness anyway. So yeah, I heard. Were you um heading to SBG Charlestown sometimes? Next was it this week or next week? I was meant to go down there to Artem and do a wee bit of training, like you know. But I don't know if I'm going to get down. Like I'm going to. I was meant to get down for the last Jesus Christ, mate, for the last couple of years. Yeah. They've been invited invited me down there to spar some of the boys. So I probably will go down there. It's a change of scenery and it's um you know just a different perspective, really. So I'll probably pop down there after the fight. Okay. So well. So obviously we all know you're fighting Gamrot in the rematch, but um I'm interested to hear. Obviously we know what happened with the bite. I think they were going to review the fight. Did they ever even get back to you about reviewing it or not? No, they never. They just said um, <clears throat> they said um, our top official, top officials like Mark Goddard and uh, the the Polish referee. I don't know his name. It's very hard to pronounce. But yeah. The Polish referee. They sat down together after the fight and they talked about it. And there's like, you know, Gamma saying you put the fingers in his mouth, and then you know I'm saying this, so it's like kind of my word against his or whatever yeah. and and then, and then they, they just says they come to an agreement that you know there's nothing going to be done about it uh-huh. I thought alright well I'll tell you what you can just pay me my win bonus and how about that <laughs> or we can set up some rematch of some sort because you know that's going to be a big fight if there's a rematch yeah, um, yeah. especially where you know this lad who's you know he's never ever lost a round before or anything like that he's always been the dominator in there so whenever people see he's come up against someone who you know can defend that takedown you know really that's what it was like I, I knew that I knew that whenever the um, a reporter texts me saying, Norman, this would be a good fight for you. And this was before I fought Paul Redman on Bama. He says, this would be a good fight. And I was like, oh, because I never wanted to fight Paul Redman. I didn't even like that fight, you know. Mm. The only reason why I accept the fight was because, Bama, you know, you know, North Face South, you know, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of drama there. Um, I, wanted, I was going to actually go and fight for the KSW, like not, not to fight Paul and just pull out of that and fight on KSW. So, but anyway, we fought Paul and then, I just knew straight away that I watched the guy fight. I says, if you can defend the takedown against this lad here and keep on the feet, you can give him problems, you know? Because he's always had problems on the feet with some people, but then his wrestling takes it. You know, he controls people with wrestling, so I just knew I was a bad matchup for him. And, um, you know, I was a big underdog going in there, I think. I don't know what the odds were, but yeah. they're all saying, we're going to fill the Polish power, this and that. And I'm like, mate, 
say what you want, but if he's not really that big. A, he's not that big a lightweight. He's he's like light and lean. You know, mm-hmm. he looks, he's ripped. He's very very ripped, which makes him kind of look big. But he's not that big or as strong as I. Ex- he's definitely not as strong as Rustam Kabalov. You know, yeah. no, there's there's no doubt about that. One hundred percent. He's he's nowhere near that level of strength. But um, so that, and that's about it. You know, that's about it. You know, so then the fight just happened. <clears throat> yeah. So you you mentioned Bama. I think after this fight, you have one more fight on your contract for KSW, but I think you also have... Do you have any more fights scheduled for a different promotion that you've not filled out yet? Was it ACB or Bama that you have some fights left on? i got one for Bama. I'm going to do that probably in February or something like that there. Something oh, okay. like that. We're going, to, we're going to work. There's definitely one more fight there. Bama would be pretty good letting me go here, so I would have favoured back to them. Um, so I'm not too sure who will fight on that or where and when. You know, I think could get me to fight this guy who's meant to be really good, you know, this, um, yeah. this what do you call that guy, um, Jordy Shoreditch, you know, he's oh, the next yeah, big yeah, prospect, Thomas. you know, we, we can maybe make that happen or something, you know, yeah. they make some guy like that miss weight and not fit, but, you know, find me about 40% or 50%, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, I'll, just keep that out of the interview, don't be putting that in the interview. <laughs> nah, well, no, 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 I'll keep that actually texting me saying, what the fuck, mate? <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, Obviously, you know, um, when you become the champion, everything increases in terms of popularity, you're in the limelight more, and etc. Given that, I mean, we said you have one more fight left, and this is a fight for the title, do you expect that if you do become the champion, as you plan to, that you'd get an offer for a new contract that is considerably better than the one you have at the moment? Well, I've only really got another uh, one more fight on the... Uh I don't know if you've just uh, changed the m- uh, microphone, Norman, but it's kind of hard to hear you. I, I, but before it was perfect, but um, are you on? Right now? Oh, that's perfect. I don't know what you did there, but that's perfect now. Um, yeah, I must have been covering the speaker or something. Like yeah, that. that's no worries. You spoke about the five rounds. I think this is the first time. Well, I think in the first time in the history of KSW, they've scheduled a title fight for five rounds, and I think this is the first time you've been scheduled for five rounds in your MMA career. I mean, does that does the extra ten minutes affect your preparation at all or not? No, not really, no, no, it just kind of depends, you know, there's some, there's some training points I have, like, especially the one for Francisco Trinaldo, I had the best training ever, I was fat, I was on point, everyone was perfect, you know, like, the, the training was nearly too good, and then once I came to the fight after the first round, I felt like some, I don't know, like someone was like a, a hot knife on my chest, I couldn't even breathe, mm. I was trying to figure out after the second, or after the first round, right, trying to relax, control your breathing like we did in the spar and stuff like that, relax. And then I heard the clapper right ten seconds ready to fight again, and I was like, nowhere near ready. And I was like, so I was out the whole second round, running around, thinking, so what the fuck, my man, training was good here, I'm gonna fight here, I'm a bit, like, not a bit tired, I'm pretty tired here, you know, so, it's, uh, I think it's more mindset, and to be honest, man, I really do think it is a mindset, because, uh, like, my training was perfect, you know, and then I went out to fight, and I felt like I was gassed out, 
I seen you um put a quite funny post on your Instagram the other day. It was a picture of Mateus with like a dress and lipstick on, and of course there was the the bite that pissed you off. But what else about the way he fought in the first fight annoyed you? Of course you said about the running away, but what was it? And is there any dis dislike to him as a person, or is it just in the cage you dislike him? You know he's um he's uh, a <laughs> he doesn't speak up. He's like such a nasty sort of sort of smug thing about him. He's like yeah. I'm going to read you this quote that I got from your Facebook the other day, and it goes like this. I think it was a picture you posted, and it says, Can you picture how famous I would be if the tricolor was wrapped around me? It's a statement to why the guys from the North have to work harder to get the proper recognition that they deserve. Why do you think this is, and like, is it only applicable it's to... Training. It's training. It's 100% training. People like, like, this is going away back, and I'm probably going to fuck like, a lot of fucking people's cages, but it is true. It's 100% training. Nobody wants to know you up here unless you are the number one. So this is um my last question, and it's how do you see this rematch playing out? Obviously, we know that Gamrot was he was apprehensive on the feet to trade with you. Do you think he'll try and make it a wrestling match again? And I mean, how do you become the new champion in KSW? Oh, well, I feel like um, he needs to make sure he's on point. Uh, for him to beat me, uh, maybe he needs to help me out, or um, you know, he needs to help me out or me. I think um, because um, five rounds and. 
I'm better boxer than him. I can perform with coat down. So I'm just, I feel like I'm better than him, you know? Yeah. He's only awkward in a way in the sense that he, he's, he doesn't really understand what to do too much with striking, but um, it, everything he does with striking is set up for the takedown, you know? And that's every time. So we've been working on a couple of things, and I just, um, I think it's more determined he'll want it more, you know? And I think I'll want it more when we get in there. I think if the gun gets tough, he'll break quick. I feel that I can just feel it I can see it in him so and I, I'll keep going you know I'm not quitting there and that's, I think that's what true thing is you know some of these guys get it tight and they're tired and they're like alright okay took my ass out I want out of here that shows what what they really are they're a quitter so I'm, uh, I'll be there the whole time mate I will uh, I just want them to fight me I want them to come back and fight me if they don't fight me I'm just going to chase them about the game stop them until the time comes says when the time comes and goes to the hill. So that's what we're doing. Like a whole different mindset, like not being the nice boy no more, just taking a shit a bit more seriously and uh, being more aggressive in there. And that's, that's, that's why I think I need to my game a bit more aggressive and not giving a fuck. Yeah. Well, <laughs> basically, mate, you see when you go in there and not giving a fuck, you'll mm. fight the best fight ever. Yeah. No stress, no worries, no nothing. Just forget about everything else that's going on and just fight. And you'll fight. You'll fight good. Well, I hope you can go in there and not give a fuck, Norman, but, um... <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, well, I will be. I'll be going in there and not giving a fuck. I'm telling you, mate, I'm going to just go straight at him. 100%. I'm going to go straight at him. I was like, let's fight, and I'm going to talk, and I'm going to chant, I'm going to do everything to get um, Thanks a lot for your time today, Norman. It's finally, it's good that I finally got to speak to you, and um, I wish you all the best, mate, and hopefully speak to you again in the future. Sound pal, thanks very much. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thank you. Have a good day, see you later.